Hello everyone, welcome back to the stream. Uh, this is the round of 32. We're going to be having I Am Turk against uh, Prince of Kabul. And I'll be casting alongside uh, Kaiser Klein today. Yeah, hello guys. So yeah, that's a pretty uh, pretty good matchup for this round, I think. To, uh, yeah, I think this is... I think this is actually a, probably the highlight match of the round, for sure. Yeah, I mean... Uh, both of these players could have a shot at reaching the uh, playoffs, I think. I mean, uh, they're maybe not like top, top, top player at the moment, but they definitely have a shot at, at being uh, at the, uh, the LAN tournament. So it's quite interesting that they meet so early. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, just going to check the map really quick. I think... It looks mm, okay. Yeah, recorded game looks okay to me. Uh, my comp is still not super fast, so I gotta wait that it's... Ah, uh, fair enough. Oh, well, I mean, I, I can't see on the minimap, but... Uh, yeah, I think it's good. Yeah, it seems I mean, fine. It's, it's good enough. Like, it's... <clears throat> if we were to restart yeah. on the start, we'd probably get something worse, so we'll leave yeah, it. Yeah, I don't think we get better than that, because it's like... Uh, there's two and a half hands for each, kind of. I mean, the third hand is a bit far for bot, and they both got two hands. Yeah, it's good. And the gold mines are pretty much symmetrical. Yeah. So, so you want to do the introductions, or shall I? No, I, I can do that. Uh, we have here on the top of the map, I am Turk, playing in the color red as India. Uh, I am Turk, the best uh, Turkish player, I guess, um, who has a lot of... Uh, Rooting in the chat usually from from Turkish players, <laughs> uh, Turkish viewers, I should say. And uh, we have on the other side of the map Prince of Kabul uh, from Finland, right? Uh, That's playing correct. in the Call of Duty as as Tex. And uh, well, that's an interesting matchup. It used to be, I think, pretty considered to be pretty Aztec favored, but. Here on, on this map and on EP, I, I think it's quite close, but maybe a bit India favorite actually. What do you think? Yeah, personally, I like this matchup better for India, but this is one of those controversial matchups that uh, people can sort of say either side is better. Uh, so, it, you know, it could potentially go either way. Uh, looks like that Indian monk is going to go down in the middle of the map. Uh, Prince. Uh, doing something smart there, knowing, recognizing that the blow gunner isn't going to do enough de uh, blah, isn't going to do enough damage to his war chief there to kill him, and he can just uh, <clears throat> safely chase that monk around until he's either forced to run or until he dies, and then safely pick up the treasure afterwards. And once he's got that treasure, that's actually uh, pretty huge in this matchup. Uh, looks like he's just going to be leaving it in the middle of the map here, maybe to look for uh, forward villagers and stuff like that. Picks up a llama as well. As a result is of it that, just, is it? Do you also see the monk underground, or is it just me? No, it, yeah, he is. <laughs> At first, you said like the monk is dead. I was like, where? Where is it? Like, uh, well, that's so weird. Anyway, um, yeah, this this treasure is really huge. Um, I would say it's a bit more of a problem if India gets it because traditionally in this matchup, Aztec yeah. has to be going for a front base. But even, I mean, it's anyway a huge treasure, and especially against the monks. Like, this guy deals 45 damage every time he hits a monk. So it's like, in four, in, uh, sorry, six hits, it kills a monk. So if you get snared by that guy, you can just say bye to your monk, basically. And, mm. uh, yeah, and he's picking up a, a CDB as well, probably soon, if he brings it. I mean, if he brings the, the net. So yep, definitely, uh, definitely could. Pretty good yeah, age one for uh, for Aztec there. He, he's probably just going to wait until he's up to the colonial age, which will be in any moment. Now he's actually aging a villager early, which is uh, going to be really nice for him. So yeah, he'll be able to easily pick that up even without the uh, Haminka at this point. Yeah, probably because he's got 90 food. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I would like to say that India got only 60 food, and it was a treasure in his base. And uh, so India lost the monk and got only 60 food while Aztec is stacking uh, some guardians and uh, 
probably going to get a CDB and stuff. So it's looking really, really good for a stack. And as you mentioned, just edging up really early. While India is edging up, uh, well, it's India, so it's going to be really slow. <clears throat> uh, yeah, definitely a ways off of aging here. Only one villager under wonder as well. Um, but India is totally okay with that normally, so not going to be the biggest issue. Uh, 700 yeah. wood coming in for Prince. Yeah. Aztec, Aztec aging one veal early makes it kind of like ballsy to just like set only one veal. And he's actually adding a second veal, maybe realizing that. Because it's already a matchup where it's kind of tight and you're aging uh, way later than Aztec and you can't really make mistakes as India, I think. It's really tight to defend. So if you're aging up, like if Aztec is aging up earlier, you probably have to set more veals on the wonder. Uh, what do you think about this Agraford placement, by the way? Isn't it a little bit too much forward, maybe? I wonder if it can just get Siege down from, from here without TC fire. Yeah, it's unit. definitely out of TC fire range, but I don't think that's a super big deal for uh, India, as long as they get out some units early on. Um, and you can always right. call Minutemen from the Agraford as well with the Ottoman Consulate, right? Uh, once yeah, he does manage to get that down at some point. But yeah, it is a little bit maybe more exposed than it could have been but it also gives them a little bit more control over maybe this forward gold mine or the hunt yeah. on like sort of the southwest side of his base uh later on in the game so yeah, i mean it, pros and cons it does, it does get line of sight all the way up here as well so there's no way any units can sneak uh through there although they can mm -hmm. still sneak through the back to to raid but well yeah anyway uh so yeah seven would like you said for for aztecs and seven, uh, 10 maces, so just really standard stuff here, like standard Aztec pressure, just pull my mace and just gonna go in, I guess. Oh, yeah. well, maybe he's waiting. Might oh, be waiting okay. for another shipment. He just clicked on one just now. Uh, could be the uh, Pumas. He's got more Puma in queue, and with a six Puma shipment, that's a lot of siege very early. Uh, that can be pretty hard for... India to deal with. You can see Turks actually throwing down walls in front of the Agrafort right now just because of that possibility, although uh, well, those walls aren't the the best walls in the world, but... Well, I'm glad he deleted pillars because that would have been a, a whole 50 wood. <laughs> yeah, that would but, have been uh, that would have been pretty ugly. He's going but, Sepoy to start here, which is kind of not so standard against Aztec, yeah, I would say. That's kind of weird. I would have liked the wall from the, the Agrafort to the forward gold mine, maybe like just two segments of wall would be only 10 wood and it would mean his units could hide behind the wall and just shoot. Because right now I, I don't really know what this wall is achieving. Four so walls as well, but there's so many Pumas. Like Prince just has a counter composition at this point and I think this Agrafort is, is dead. There's no Ottoman consulate, no Minutemen. The Minutemen would do great here, but... <coughs> How is India going to deal with that? Yeah, it looks like he's not going to be able to defend this. And th losing the wonder in this matchup is huge, not only because you don't have a military building behind this, but once he kills that with the three times bo bonus aura from the oh. from the uh, war chief, he gets 960 experience off of that wonder, which is, at this point in the game, that's two full shipments. Like, he basically gets 1,400 resources from, that, uh, from killing that yeah. wonder. So it's a huge swing. XP being a bit less valuable for Aztec just because they get so much of it, but when it's 1k XP, you don't say no. Like, <laughs> yeah, like that's, so that's uh, like if you imagine how much you pay for mercantilism, what is it, 1500 gold for 2000 XP? Exactly, it's like, yeah. It's uh, when you consider how much gold it's worth, that much XP could be worth like 700 gold, it's just well, an insane swing. Even, even for Aztecs, like there's a big button in the market, right? It gives you also something like that. I think it gives you XP for some resources as well. Uh, it's all watch if you that have that, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> but yeah, it just got 1k XP there, as well as as denying so much control and uh, and M2 has to rebuild the racks. It's just like so so huge. Yeah, and that's and, all because he started with those Sepoy, right? Like he couldn't actually get in range to deal with those. Uh, Puma, in addition to Sepoy, yeah. not actually dealing enough damage to the Puma. So It's maybe kind of a mind game. Maybe he expected, you know, usually India goes Gorka, and maybe he was thinking, okay, maybe maybe Aztec is going to go for Coyotes to counter my Gorkas. Maybe I'm just going to make uh, Sepoy and be fine. But uh, yeah, I think 
Gorkas are the safest choice of all, just because coyotes are not super scary and you can hold them with uh, with your monks and TC fire and minute men and stuff. So, so yeah, indeed, like just giving up the Agra fort so early and uh, Prince shipping five villagers after that, as well as six hundred wood, so just setting up for the a bit longer game. Uh, yeah, and maybe it's gonna contain India. It's also uh, a bit interesting that. Like, despite the super early age up that um, Prince got, Turk still decided to go for the Wood Trickle as his first card, which is just really, really greedy. So as yeah. a result, he, like, couldn't get the Consulate down or anything. That He still doesn't have a Consulate, actually. It's going down now. But, uh, like, he doesn't have access to those Ottoman Minutemen or, like, Hussars or even the 10% HP on the British Consulate or anything like that at this point, which is just huge. Yeah. And now with the Aztec Army coming in here, just looking at the military population, he's got more than double... Uh, what Prince has. I mean, there's still Minutemen available, but um, it's still going to be really hard to hold this. And some Zems coming out, not going to be super useful. Only a couple of Coyotes in there. Uh, and he already had Depoys anyway, so I'm not sure about that. Uh, but yeah, the Consulate is up, but no Alliance yet. Yeah, it looks like he's maybe uh, planning to wait for Diplomatic Intrigue. He has a shipment now, but not sending it. Uh, he should maybe really auto, auto the uh, ally with the Ottoman consul right now. He would have the export to call the Minutemen. Um, yeah, really but at the same time, the Minutemen alone aren't going to hold this at this point. He's already lost too many units. No, I, I think you're going to at times the house and the Minutemen at least. Because you, you get definitely enough export for boss, house, and Minutemen, right? Yeah, but if he, uh, if he waits, like he's just going to be dead, right? Like he's losing yeah, bills, I mean, I, his racks is going to go down. Um, no, I mean, it's just it's theoretically, theoretically speaking, because I mean, this game is over, honestly. Like, there's nothing he can do now, but I'm just saying, like, best would be probably to pop pass and Minutemen, but it's just, yeah, it's just GG. Yeah, just being a little uh, bit too greedy there, and also just maybe uh, a little bit of a questionable choice on the unit composition. And as a result, you know, Prince just gets a really big advantage off of killing that Agra Fort really early. Indeed, yeah. That was... Um, the good old way this matchup goes when India doesn't defend super properly, you know? Yeah. And that what that's probably what makes a lot of people say it's Aztec favor. Just you, you can't you, you have to be super on point with your defense as India. If if you're not, then this happens. Like you just get steamrolled. Yeah, for so, sure. Yeah, take take a look at the uh, at the shipment timeline. Uh, <laughs> a three shipment spike for yeah. uh, for Prince. Basically, three shipments. I mean, it's like there would have been anyway one, but there's just two extra. Yeah, he shipments. just just gets two extra shipments off of killing that Agra for it. So, but but then after that, to be fair, you see he doesn't get a shipment for really long, just because the XP curve is like. I mean, it's getting more and more expensive to get shipments, you know. Yeah, but but still, like, it's it's just so good. And uh, Prince ahead in resources as well since the start because of the treasures and the CDB. He did pick up the CDB, yeah. Yeah, uh, and so also, just, also just because um, I don't know, just because Turk went so greedy that it just yeah. allowed him to get so far ahead so early on. What about like three hundred export first card or something like that? Yeah, that's an option. Uh, like, just be ready to have your minute man, or you can also call your house if you need. Definitely not going for the villagers uh, at this at start, but but yeah, the wood trickle was questionable, I think. Yeah, I mean, like, as long as you don't die at the beginning of the game, your economy is going to be better than Aztec in the long run anyway, right? Like, you yeah. don't really need the extra, like, 200 wood anyway. or whatever you get from sending the wood trickle yeah. before you send other shipments. So, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely not the greatest card to send in that situation but anyway prince is going to be up uh one zero in the series and we'll be jumping into game two in a moment here uh prince yep. does have to select his sieve first so turk has uh, an opportunity to get back into the game or series a little bit with his counter pick yeah let me just uh take yeah. a quick look at the map pool this format definitely makes it easier to um to win games if you're behind, just because your opponent, like when you're when you're losing, your opponent is just having less and less sieves to play, and you always get to counter pick. So it definitely makes it for a bit closer series, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, looks like the next game is going to be on, yeah, Baja California, as he's selected here. Uh, so, not the uh, not the most easily defended trading posts, a little bit of water, and some choke points as well. And not the most resources in your base. Um, so I'm a little bit interested to see what yeah. Prince chooses to pick here. Prince uh, has been mm -hmm. a fan of uh, Japan and India himself in the past, which are civs that are quite good on maps like this. So I wouldn't be surprised if he picked something like that. I kind of like Japan and Bahad just because it's so large and it's so hard to siege down the shrines. And Ashes uh, running on the map are quite annoying to deal with. But at the same, at the same time, there's also a straight TP stagecoach, uh, which is not always great for Japan, obviously. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe not a great sieve to pick first, at least, right? Like Japan first and Baha sounds a bit maybe risky. Uh, India would be, I guess, all right. Uh, I, I don't know. He could also just go for the standard French Russia, um, French Germany sieves, but Russia apparently. Yeah. Um, Why not? Yeah, it kind of makes sense, I guess. Lets you control that middle sort of pass in between the players really easily. Um, and potentially get that uh, stagecoach down. It also gives you a little bit of pressure on your opponent if your opponent wants to play something greedy on this map, like with the water and stuff. Yeah. The one thing that is not great for Russia is the size of this map. Although Bahad got a little bit reduced. I mean, it used to be bigger. But, yeah, I think uh, the rush time everything was... Else is good. Yeah, I think right. the the rush time was reduced by five or ten seconds, like the, the amount of time it takes to walk from your town center to your opponent's oh, town yeah. center, so it's, Yeah, because uh, when the when the back when the map is really big for uh, Russia it means you get raided potentially. Uh that, because you don't have much cab early on, so it's it's a pain to go catch the cab with infantry or something on this kind of map. Uh you well, yeah, it's longer to, to just cross the map with your wheels and go drop a blockhouse forward and that kind of stuff. But, uh, but yeah, still a, a solid pick, I think, on this map just because of the amount of resources and the stagecoach. And, yeah. yeah, you can apply a lot of pressure just by placing that forward blockhouse on this map uh, really close to your opponent's base. Yeah. Could even wall up the chokes and just, like, drop two blockhouses in the middle. <laughs> but... We'll see if he does something like that. Yep, uh, looks like Turk is now back. He could also just stay with India, which is also a good civ against Russia. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, it still feels like this map would be rather good for Russia against India. But regardless, India is such a good pick against Russia. Yeah, like at, at some point in the game... There just gets you just get to the point where the the military is just impossible for Russia to deal with. Yeah. Um. And as as long as you can reach that point, then it's uh very difficult for Russia to win, and it's pretty hard for Russia to prevent them from getting that point too. Uh, just with all it's the defensive bit, tools that they have. A little <laughs> bit similar to, uh, to Aztecs, right? Yeah. Like Aztecs also at some point can't really deal with the military. But the difference is that Aztecs have much more potential early on than Russia. I mean, the the pressure is much more scary. Like, there's no way, there's no way Russia is gonna get the Agrafort down as fast as Aztec did previous game. Um, but it's a mirror, apparently. Yeah, this is a this is a matchup. I feel like we've been seeing a lot recently, um, in other matches, and also a matchup we've been playing a lot together recently. Yeah. So we don't need to talk about that. Okay, fine. We'll we'll keep we'll keep it mostly secret, the secret strats. <laughs> but um, right. I'm interested to see how they approach it because um, I feel like this matchup, you like you don't really get to play Russia the same way you normally would want to play Russia in other matchups. So yeah, um, but I don't remember seeing I am Turk ever playing Russia before. Yeah, I've, um, I haven't really seen it either. And I mean, if you just look at his home city level, if you assume that he created that home city at level 100, he hasn't got a lot of XP on that since then. Yeah, that's true. And he doesn't have a lot Although of decks either. I, I know I uh, I used to have some one level 100 home cities with a lot of games just because I played unrated. Mm -hmm. But 
yeah, you, uh, I I just never seen I'm Turk play Russia. I think, or maybe once or something. But in Russia, Miro, like you said, is kind of a special matchup. I mean, it's not the most standard gameplay from Russia, I guess. You can try to just all in and that's kind of easy to do, but you know, it's it's not like if you're up against some some standard like see that you're just going to pressure ship five Cossacks in their base and just do Russia things. Here you're up against against Russia as well, so it's different. Yep, that uh that normal five Cossack first doesn't always accomplish the uh same amount of damage or scouting that it would against another civ for sure. Uh, but here we go, starting the game. <clears throat> we will uh, we'll have to wait and see how they choose to play it, because... Uh, yeah, I don't know, this is just a matchup that... Uh, we've even seen it in show matches, too, not just in recent tournament series and stuff. And it, everyone seems to have a different approach to the matchup at the moment, so... Yeah. I wonder if the uh, the water will come into play at all. I feel like it probably won't, but you never know. I wonder if it's possible to uh, like defend and go water while your opponent has a front base and just rushing you. I don't know. I don't know if it's possible to hold in a Russian mural while while going water. Yeah, I'm not. Like, I'm not certain either. <clears throat> anyway, uh, you wanna introduce the players? All right. I suppose it's my turn. So on the yeah. right side of the map, uh, we've got in the red Russia. Um, we have I am Turk, down 1-0 in the series and looking to make a comeback at the moment. And uh, his opponent on the other side of the map, taking a quick lead in the series, is going to be Prince of Kabul, also playing Russia in the color blue. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, not a whole lot to say just yet. Prince is going to come across an early native scout treasure, which is really, really nice. Doesn't speed up his age up or anything like that, but will give him a lot more information on what uh, Turk wants to do later on in the game as well. Help scout out, as well as helping scout out some of those larger treasures on this map for uh, later in age one here. Yeah, uh, I just like to say that the resources are fine. <clears throat> it's uh, really fair, and uh, yeah, on this map, you, it's kind of a weird map uh, regarding treasures. Because there's a lot of like irrelevant small treasures and a few really good big treasures. Like uh, there's this here, for example, and also 150 coins somewhere. I don't remember where, but I've seen it uh, here actually. So there's, but but none of these treasures have been scouted. Uh, although, like you said, well, this native scout is probably gonna find the XP treasure. And in a mirror like that, oh, no, it's turning back, never mind. Because getting the XP in a mirror like that means you're going to, if, if it's front base against front base, you're going to get your second unit shipment much earlier than your opponent, which can make a big deal. Yeah, for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, neither player finding any of those super large treasures just yet. 10 coin going to be picked up by I am Turk probably going to be the uh, the biggest winner of this age one so far but uh, <laughs> Prince finally spotting out that 150 coin and uh, being yeah. so close to his opponent's base I think yeah. he might just choose to start that because uh, his opponent if he hasn't already taken it wouldn't have spotted it but no instead uh, does actually find that explorer and gets into melee combat right away he does of course have that uh, native scout to come help him out so Turk's going to be forced to uh, retreat towards his base but uh, he shouldn't be off too poorly as a result of this, so not going to be yeah, a super really big deal. And yeah, you, you can kind of guess that I am too probably didn't scout this treasure because if you scout 150 gold just next to your base, you just pick it up directly, right? Because it's just such a good treasure. But it's just so risky to start it here because anytime I am too could scout it, it's so 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 close. Yeah, for so sure. Prince is probably just be happy, like kind of containing. Uh, I am Turks Explorer in his base, uh, but probably not going to go for the coin treasure, or is he? Mm, looks like he might just do it. He doesn't even need to kite it with how much HP he has. He could just do it uh, really quickly, but on the other hand, he could also just wait until they're in Colonial and try to go for it then. 
<clears throat> and looks like yeah, both players are going to be aging up at exactly the same time. Both of the quartermasters are going to be that 400 wood. Not going to see anything too crazy like the Philosopher Prince that we've seen a couple of times recently with Russia. Yeah. And Ford Villagers coming out for both players as well. So it is going to be Ford Base against Ford Base. Yeah, three wheels for I am Turk and two for Prince. Yep, and it looks like uh, Turk, seeing the Vils, is just like, I'm just going to follow you now. I'm just going to place this blockhouse on top of wherever you place yours. <clears throat> yeah, but they they will have to start building soon regardless, because they want their blockhouse to be up in time for Colonial. And yeah, uh, well, they're pretty much next to each other. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Prince is going to try to get some HP from this blockhouse. But the uh, the positioning of these blockhouses is a little bit interesting because um, Turk, if they if they don't go just all in on each other, Turk actually sort of has a direct, like, undefended path yeah. towards Prince's base. Whereas uh, Prince sort of has to fight this blockhouse. He can't really go around to Turk's base. He's too far away and there's too many obstacles uh, in between his blockhouse and that base. So... <clears throat> Could be a little bit interesting, but most likely we're just going to see both players going uh, pretty all in here. Let's take a look at the units yeah. in queue and the shipments. Uh, no like, units in queue just yet, but... It, it's just... Um, like, Prince is just pressured a little bit more already just because of where they drop their front base. But at the same time, it means Prince can call Minutemen a bit more easily to defend because it's like one screen away from his TC. So if they if they if there's a close fight, he could just call Minutemen. Yeah, for sure. While, well, I'm Turk also could call Minutemen with just more walking time and less HP on them when they when they reach the front base. So, mm -hmm. uh, five cards for boss players, but Prince maybe hiding them. Yeah, uh, shifting them from his TC just to not reveal them. Maybe trying to bait I am Turk into being a little bit too much confident. And just like attacking directly his front base, but I don't know because right now I'm pretty sure now nah, he's showing them now. Okay, I don't know. Yep, and then both players going for Strelitz so they're as their uh, first batch here. Um, <clears throat> looks like Prince and going to try be a little bit aggressive. He might not be yeah, able to sit under here for too long, but with the batch of musketeers coming out, he might be all right. Yeah, it looks like he's pretty confident he can uh, just pressure. That's kind of like, uh, I mean, it's a mirror, right? So he shouldn't really feel like he has more stuff than his opponent, but uh, he's confident, so. Five mass popping, this could go really poorly for Prince here. Yeah, it's, uh, and this is part of the problem if you try to go in under, under the blockhouse and um, you sit there for a little bit longer and you take a little bit of extra damage. Uh, but four Cossacks going to be coming uh, first for Prince before yeah. uh, Turk's second shipment, along with another batch of Strelets, and it, suddenly uh, it's not looking that bad, although uh, there's not a lot of Cossacks to deal with these other Cossacks. It's really close. Yeah, it is. It is really, really close. Uh, with, no, it's not so close anymore. Yeah, uh, another batch of Musketeers popping out for Turk here. Cossacks now under the Strelets. Uh, going Prince to be going down. If you can get Strelets out... Prince, uh, he's fine, and he's got the resources for a batch. Does he have some in queue, or no, um, he doesn't. He's not training units right now, but he has definitely uh, now his house because he shipped certain straight I'd say on the way. So I think that was a pretty good trade for I am too, but I don't think he's gonna be able to to kill uh, Prince Bookhouse directly just because certain straights are gonna pop in time. Uh, but. But Prince is just behind in military now, so... And in this kind of... Ma oh, well, setting threats as well for M2, so... In this kind of matchup, this yeah, kind but, of small advantage no balls. But uh, at this point, after the Cossacks have been burned through, uh, gonna be training Strelets instead of the Musketeers, as uh, Turk was training, and that's gonna give him an advantage here in these uh, fights, potentially, as the Strelets do, of course, do pretty well against the Muskets. But that said, um, there's still a lot of units left here for Turk. And it looks like Prince might be forced yeah. to actually concede this blockhouse. Yeah. Like, you don't really have a reason to keep making must at this point. I mean, like, making 
an extra batch of musk when you know no one's gonna get any Cossacks anytime soon because boss players are all in. So I, I'm not sure why Antio keeps making musketeers. Like this could be just the one way uh, Prince manages to hold his block out here. Yeah. Just because there's no Cossacks. There's just no Cossacks in the field. So there's no it's, reason to uh, to make musk. Seems like that's just what he's macroed for, but uh, it's still working out for him for the moment. Uh, Prince now yep. training musketeers himself in queue behind this. Uh, no, uh, no resources to train those trillettes. They do cost a lot more resources to queue up than, um, <clears throat> yeah. Than, um, sorry, musketeers. And there's a stable going down at home for uh, I am Turk as well. So, uh, as long along with a 700 gold shipment, is going to give him a decent follow up here. Indeed, yeah. Although and 700 he. Prince. Yeah, that's going to yeah. allow him to sort of rebuild the this blockhouse when it goes down, maybe add in a stable himself. But yeah, the blockhouse uh, definitely going down, now only 200 HP left on that, and it will finally die to this last torch here. And uh, this is uh, going to be pretty big, because there's not a lot of uh, hunts left in Prince's yeah. base behind this. He's got a few animals left, a uh, few on the left side near his town center, so he can sort of survive for another couple minutes, but... After that, he's really going to have to get out of his base somehow. But, um, yeah, it's looking uh, rough for him for sure. There's um, Cossacks in queue now for I Am Turk. I feel like maybe Prince um, should have let his blockhouse go down maybe a little bit earlier. I feel like he tried a bit too hard maybe to defend it. At the end of the day, he lost really a lot of units there. But he's ahead in Nico by Strivils. Maybe I Am Turk had to cut villagers uh, so he might somehow find a way back in this game but it really doesn't do good for Prince. Yeah, gonna lose this house on the side here as well. Uh, that's gonna hurt especially since he's already had to invest so much wood into rebuilding this infrastructure. Um, finally getting a couple of market upgrades in. Turk already sitting on steel traps. Oh, yeah. So that makes up for the villager gap. Although now there's a six villagers gap. Yeah, I mean, it's probably uh, not very for ages. They are popping not at the same time. Yeah, now it's three bills, but there's at least just like more than three bills of a difference. Yeah, uh, it's a uh, pretty small though overall. And to be yeah. honest, like, are these bills really going to do all that much for Prince at this point? Like with the hunts yeah. running out in his base, it seems like they might not actually be able to pay off. And uh, actually, <laughs> gonna widen the vill gap a little bit more with this raid, picking up a couple of uh, Turks villagers here on the side. Yeah, I mean, let's keep in mind there's still Minutemen, like, there's still the Defender's advantage here. These villagers can still TC fire, right? So there might be a way... Yeah, this is looking scary, hold. though. He doesn't Maybe have he any... He wins, but he will not hold. Yeah, he doesn't but have he any infantry hold. at this blockhouse queued up, so... He could maybe. Oh, I mean, he has I he know. has a lot of extra villagers. If he uses the villagers to fight, he can yeah. afford to lose them. Yeah. He's still ahead in eco by by seven villagers. Yeah, that actually went uh, oh. that actually went really well for him. I was uh, looking at the wrong person's queue on my I think, so I didn't uh, realize he actually did have musketeers queued. And uh, yeah, but and, I mean, and, he still he still has the problem where he doesn't really have any hunts left at home, right? I mean, there's still a couple of animals, but um, yeah, of course. But now that he, that he even up the the military kind of like they like, Amtrak doesn't have any more big military advantage, so he can't pressure that much on. For example, these animals here, you yeah. couldn't really use them, but now, like, Prince doesn't have enough to break the blockhouse, but he has enough to defend his hunt, and that's what he's doing now. He could even wall up a little bit, to be honest. It's a really good uh, spot to drop a couple walls. Uh, since, oh, a dog, that's interesting. Uh, but, but since... Turk is going rather heavy on musketeers. Imagine a wall and uh, some strelets behind to just defend the hand would be really nice. But but yeah, this is cheeky duck is uh yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm not I sure. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I mean, it'll help him catch up in eco for sure. But he's not going to be able to train a lot of units while he's making fishing boats, and not being able to train units when you're trying to hold map control is uh. Maybe gonna make it a little bit easier for Prince to get back out on the map. Who knows as well. That's a big investment now, because one dog, you know, 
Uh, like, okay, uh, Prince already shipped 700 wood and invested it into buildings, but Turk got away with shipping coin and building stuff just without the wood. So you could say, okay, yeah, he still has 700 wood. He can make fishing boats from it, right? Uh, but Skunels as well is a really big investment. Now it's two cards into this fishing boom, basically. Yeah. And look how far away the fish is from this dock as well. Yeah, it's to no, walk so far. Or uh, sail so afraid. far. He was afraid to get scouted. But honestly, the map is so big and Prince is so contained in his base, I don't think he needed to drop a dock there. Although it's not a huge deal, but it's definitely some walking time. Yeah, <laughs> and losing these uh, losing these Cossacks in Prince's base is just going to make that even harder when he's uh, trying to fish boom behind this. He's going to have even fewer units to hold the forward base. Although at the moment, I mean, military population still uh, not that far in favor of Prince. And yeah, this is going to be a rough raid if That's so Turk spots it. Well, I mean, I think uh, I mean, Turk knew that like those villagers were hunting down here, and he forced them to run away, so he knew that they had to be somewhere. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's just like there was no dead animal, nothing, but it's a choke. It's just a choke where the, the calf goes through. As yeah, well, just so the calf just has to pass through there if they want to raid anyway, yeah. so... Oh my god, rendering but, plant uh, coming in too. 10 villager gap now. Yeah, and, and without, without Prince being able to actually gather resources here... And yeah. to train more units, um, maybe Prince Turk will be able to, to remass a little bit here to be able to hold this blockhouse. Yeah, Prince really has to do something now. He already has to like nuke this blockhouse or or clean up I am Turk's army or something. Uh, he needs to make something happen because uh, Prince is just really way behind in Nico now. And I am Turk even going for the the fishing upgrade. Yeah. Oh, if he gets away with that, he's won the game for sure. But... Yeah, uh, no repair on this blockhouse either, so it's going to go down very quickly. He has another blockhouse at home, though, so uh, he might not be too concerned about that. Looks like he's going to go for another raid with these musketeers, but uh, not confident enough to continue with that with Prince's army sort of posturing towards that side. <clears throat> but uh looks like he is still gonna go for it gonna try and buy as much time for this fish boom to pay off as possible but he might be putting his army in a spot where they could potentially get caught out of position here yeah. although what? i mean if he sends like caravels or trains a caravel he could retreat towards the coastline and he's got a blockhouse going up on the coastline here as well so he does actually sort of have a way out maybe he doesn't have a shipment right now to send caravels though and he doesn't have any caravels in queue, so this army is definitely in danger of being oh. trapped. And it looks like it is going to get caught by the Cossacks here. There's Boyas in, which is going to be huge in this fight. And uh, yeah, that's because Prince didn't ship water cards or something, so he he has Boyas, and he's going to clean up. Yeah, but and, look, look at the yeah. shipment point from Turk. He's uh, poised to send caravels here, but again, just no shipment ready just yet. It's on the way, though, maybe? Uh, I don't think it is. On f oh, it is yeah, on the way, okay. So the caravels do arrive, and that's going to keep the rest of this army alive, potentially, although a few villagers under threat. But yeah. uh, no, Prince looks like he's going to try and back out of there. It, it does totally reveal his plan, though. Now Prince knows what's going on. I mean, a blockhouse next to the shore, two caravels and a dock and stuff. Like, he knows Turk is fish booming now. And Prince has himself water cards. Which is interesting because uh, you could expect him to just not have a water deck, but he does have a water deck, so he could also just uh, ship caravels himself and maybe try to just uh, break the water. And killing so many bills here that the eco pop is not that uneven anymore. But also losing lots of units to the caravels, so right? it's a really close game to be honest. Probably. I would say it's maybe a little bit Turk favored now, just because he's got the potential. Like he's got the uh, the. the you well, the you say that car. you say that, but all these villagers are going to be either killed or idled in a moment here. Maybe if uh, Prince decides to move down there, and with the positioning of well, uh, then again, Turk can also pressure his right own now, villagers. I'm saying right now, I like Turk's position more than obviously. If he loses all these villagers, he's in, in big trouble. But the good thing is that he doesn't need that much map control just because he's got water. Like, he doesn't need hunts, basically. He does need a bit of coin, though, but... Yep, but this army going to get caught in the middle here, completely surrounded on all sides. 
uh, by the Strelitz and the Cossacks. Musketeer is going to melee just to do a little bit of extra damage to the Cossacks, but it is going to go down. Uh, whether or not that's a super big deal for uh, Turk at this point remains to be seen, but it definitely hurts. I don't know. I feel like Turk is just trying to buy time because he doesn't need to do eco damage, right? He's ahead in eco, he's water booming. So I guess he was trying to buy time with his units, but should you already do that? Unless, unless it's just raiding with a few Cossacks, should you already walk your army in the middle there if if you have more eco and less units? It just mm -hmm. was really risky, and uh, it's just allowing Prince to... Prince, despite being behind in eco, if he just keeps cleaning up uh, I'm Turk's army, he's going to eventually just uh, win on the land, like just get the TC down and, and stuff. So, But there's two stables here, which could be... Yeah, but I don't I don't think he has the resources to actually train um, those units. Boyar is coming in now for him, but uh, no units to really make use of that. He definitely wants to. I don't know if he can, but shipping Boyars into stables, he definitely wanted to make lots of Cossacks, but it looks like it's not going to work. More Musketeers, he's really trying to buy a lot of time there, and, well, he might... No, nope, he's going back. No, nope. he might find lots of villagers here. Yeah, it's possible. They're going to be spotted by these five masks of Prince, so uh can just pull his wheels back now. Uh, but he doesn't. Okay, he does now. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is going to be a little bit awkward for Turk moving forward here. It looks like he's going to lose a lot of the infrastructure in his base, potentially the town center at some point. No, it looks like Prince is going to try and move down and find the villagers. He knows that there's no villagers in this base because there's nothing in the town center. Um... But maybe he's yeah. actually being a little bit distracted by the armies here, so going to go home and try to defend yeah. his villagers. So Turk is and, succeeding in buying time, and he's got a dock up on um, Prince's yeah, side of the water. And, so, uh, and also look at the the food for for Prince. He's got one villain. These musketeers, like, he though, all, he denied all the food gathering. But yeah, again, uh, I feel like he should just run Cossacks on the map just right, but because Cossacks don't get caught that easily, he should stop running infantry because. These boyars Cossacks from, from Prince are just tearing through through whatever units Turk is sending across the map. Whatever yeah. infantry you uh, So yeah, I, I don't know, it's really a close game. I mean I'm Turk keeps losing army, but he keeps being well, he's way ahead in Eco now. He's even starting to boom on the other side as well. Yeah, so and I don't uh know yeah, it's. it's I think. I think it's. Um. I. I still would prefer to be Prince in this uh, situation. I think. Uh, dropping a dock now as well, on the water there to. Uh, try and keep control over his side of the water. He knows that Turk has. Um, Turk is on the other side, but he. Uh, if he wants to, have a really really solid chance of winning the game, he needs to make sure that Turk doesn't have control over both sides. So. Um, yeah. I like that decision for sure. Oh, there's the cab HP from a uh, Turk as well, but he has like no cab. I guess he's just kind of running out of shipments, maybe. Um, but yeah, anyway, I I don't know. I don't know how the, is this is gonna end. Uh, if Prince can keep the control on the on his side of the water, I think he wins. Yeah, it could be. Like, and, and Prince has the potential to win this game by just finding the villagers, basically. Because mm -hmm. if he finds all these wheels around here on, on the two gold mines, uh, well, that would even up the eco gap, kind of. And then he just has more units anyway, so... Uh, he needs to maybe try a bit harder to find the villagers. And he's sending two Cossacks, and he might just put all these villagers here and send the rest of his Cossacks directly and just clean up in bills or oh, nine bills <clears throat> yeah it looks like that is what he's gonna do as well so uh, all these villagers in danger Turk is gonna fight with them but uh, little does he know the Cossacks are on the way uh, or will be on the way gonna, gonna be intercepting a batch of Cossacks which is uh, gonna be maybe uh, actually okay for Turk with these minimum popping but no it looks like he's gonna be able to clean up the Cossacks or uh, no actually it is gonna be good for Turk uh, with these um, I feel like reinforcements Prince coming Prince let his two Cossacks here die a little bit too easily and he should have just sent all his cav directly on the coin mine and then he would have like 
more Cossacks and there would be no Minutemen and he would just kill all the Bills. Uh, I don't know. It's To me, it's looking like Turk is just getting ahead. Like, look well, you, you say that, but Prince is fishing himself now as well, so he's going to be catching up with the economy um, pretty quickly, potentially, especially uh, with these villagers yeah. being forced off of this coin mine on the southern side of the map. And but there's a big window now for, for Turk to do some damage because look at the food from, from Prince. He's got only six fishing boats and food. Mm -hmm. it, it's going to take a and long time before he can mass them and start massing units. And look at how many Cossacks are Yeah, it's are just there an insane there. mass of Cossacks. And he's got double carded. I mean, to me, it's GG. Uh, I, Prince needs to buy so much time now if he wants to actually start water booming himself. And even then... Uh, Turk has one step in the water, so he's able to sh like build some caravels and be annoying. So I don't, I don't know. Like I don't know what Prince is gonna do about it. It's not totally over, but uh, it's just so many Cossacks. They can clean up the army. Just, just the Cossacks can kill Prince army right now. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of Cossacks for sure. Um, even more coming to reinforce them just now. Prince maybe being a little bit too aggressive, but at the same time, being aggressive like this might play to his advantage. Like, Pr Turk seems to feel like he has, um, like, not enough units to f take the fight just yet, maybe? So, yeah, but playing now, aggressive uh, might be sort of a, a mind game thing that gets to Turk, but that being said, with all these villagers on the southern uh, side of the map spotted by Turk and the army a little bit out of position to defend it, he could lose a lot of villagers uh, here. <laughs> Oh, and so uh, yeah, so it looks like he's just going to be forced to fight with the villagers. The army is uh, coming, but it's a long way off, and it looks like, yeah, this might be the end of the game. Yeah, <laughs> just so many villagers there, and some Cossacks as well. Everything dying, just... Uh... Uh, Prince had a window to win this game, and he really needed to, to deny the coin, and maybe start booming himself a little bit earlier on water. Like, he shipped 600 coin after Boyas. Maybe he could have gone Schooners and start directly booming. Because I feel like, uh, yeah, he just missed a bit the window there. Yeah, for but sure. But then again, I'm sure was just ahead early on. And, and this means he was able to water boom and get away with it. Mm. Just but at the same time, that water boom almost threw it for him. Uh, a yeah, couple of, course. of times there. Of course, but my, my point is that uh, since the start... Prince was a bit behind, and that is why the water boom worked, probably. Because, like, uh, if he didn't lose his blockhouse at the start, it would be a totally different game. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, it was a good game. And we were discussing water booms, right, at the start. It wasn't exactly what we had in mind. Like, uh, yeah. it was a late water boom, but still interesting to see. And, uh, oh, that fight, uh, are you seeing the... Uh, I'm, I'm not in the game, no. But because there's one fight in, uh, uh, in Prince Base where he cleaned up with the Minutemen. He just lost, like, 10 units and killed 25 units of, of Turk. And that's when he was able to start outmassing. And Turk was going back and started to waterboom. And, yeah, it was just... Uh, it's nice to see a mural that doesn't go totally symmetrically, you know? Yeah. Boss players play differently, and then it's a bit more dynamic than, like, a Brit mural where boss players just make mask, or a French mural always just skirm goon, you know? Uh, that is more entertaining to watch, in my opinion. It's uh, certainly something different. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, Turk bringing it back into the getting back into the series so not gonna be uh it's not gonna be a short one guys we're in for the long haul here yeah probably then again who knows like maybe uh it's gonna be a clean like a, a quick 2-0 sweep from one of these players now and uh over in 20 minutes but probably not um uh, who has to pick first now it's turk and he can't play uh russia anymore but then again, uh, Turk got away with winning as Russia, which is definitely not one of his main sieves. So he can't use Russia anymore. Big deal, you know. But he can still play anything else, like India, for example, and Deccan.
Yeah, uh, he could. India is definitely a good pick on this map. Like, not, not having Russia is not a problem for M2, I guess. He doesn't really want to play so much Russia, I guess. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, like you said before, like, he's not really a Russian player anyway, so... Yeah, yeah. Uh, getting getting the yeah. win with Russia is big for him because now he has just a much larger sieve pool to pick from in the remaining games. Yeah, although Prince only used Aztex and uh, well, Prince anyway can play pretty much every sieve, so it doesn't matter so much for him. Um, but yeah, I could see India for Turk, but also France would be good on Deccan. Uh, I mean, it's a map where you can pick a lot of sieve, right? Um, I, I don't know what he's going to do. Japan also works, so... But then again, Japan probably not being the best first pick. <clears throat> yep, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, there is definitely a lot of uh, a lot of options for pretty most civs on this map, really. Um, yeah. I feel like most civs can make use of those additional starting crates in some form or another. Uh, maybe a couple yeah. civs that can't really make as much from them would be like Dutch and Portugal a little bit, but there's just so many features on this map. Like the fact that you got two TP lines, which are not like it's at the same time a, a good map for like some ATP sieve, but also a good map for a sieve that would just take two TP stagecoach on the side. It's a map where you can wall up, but it's and and it's a map where you have good resources in base, but not too many. Where you have livestock where you start with more crates, which means there's it's more flexible at start. You can go for a TP, you can go for market, but you can also have a consulate or whatever, depending on your sieve. So it just makes up for so many different kind of strategies here. Mm -hmm. And it makes, yeah, so many sieves viable. Um, I wonder which sieve you just would not pick on that map. Honestly, I can't really think of, uh, of one. Like, there's um, always a good reason to pick a sieve on Deccan. If you're Dutch, you can get a bank uh, really easily. If you're Ports, you can uh, get ATP, you can camp in, in your base, you can wall up. I don't know, there's always, like, a good reason to pick any sieve on Deccan, I feel like. I, I, I can't decide which sieve is best. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, hard to choose, for sure. I saw someone, I don't remember who it was. Who was I casting the other day? Um... Uh, Maybe it was the nope. I I don't remember. I was casting some match recently, and someone picked Iroquois on Deccan, which I thought made a lot of sense because was Yu Yu. Oh, who? Well, it was Yu Yu, right? Was it? I don't oh, think no. I've casted no, any of Yu's games sorry, recently. I I upped, uh some game with Yu Yu Iro, I think, but that was some. What that was not a Tony game. Uh, no, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know either, but I thought it was something I hadn't really considered because uh, one of the one of the balance changes to Eero on ESOC patch um, was to remove that starting trading post from them, and you can just get the starting trading post with the additional crates on Deccan, and it's one of the reasons that Iroquois is a really, really strong sieve. And yeah, it looks like Prince is going to pick Eero, so... Oh. It kind of... I don't know if it quite pushes them up to that... Uh, up to that uh, point where they were on the official patch, being the top sieve. But, uh, I mean, just because the opponent gets so many additional crates too and can yeah. get a lot of extra stuff, but it definitely is nice for them. Yeah, it's definitely interesting just because you can you can totally build a farm with your, with your Travois after getting enough uh, livestock. And you can also get the TP, which is just so good for Euro. And yeah, it's... Mm -hmm. Just a, a nice pick, and it's a nice counter pick to India as well, right? I mean, it's definitely one of the matchups where India can be in trouble. Yeah, um, Iroquois just has much stronger units than uh, India in the mid game. Girls, yeah. yeah, I mean, economically, India has the advantage for sure, but just. In terms of raw military and speed and stuff like that, Iroquois is uh, quite strong. And it's just one of those things that <laughs> India has trouble dealing with, for sure. 
Uh, yeah, in, in, colonial, in, in colonial, actually, the military is rather even. I mean, Gorkas are better than Aena, I think, and uh, and Sepoys are better than Tomahawks and stuff. But yeah, in Fortress, just the Forest Brothers, and and India can't reach Fortress nearly as fast as uh, as India uh, as Hero. Sorry. Yep, uh, it's your turn to do introductions, by the way. Oh, okay, yeah. So here on the top of the map, we have I am Turk who managed to even up the score to 1-1 uh, playing India in the color red. And on the other side of the map, we have uh, Prince of Kabul playing as hero in the color blue. And uh, I don't know which crate start this is because there's too many crates. Uh, it looked like a wood start since there there is a wood crate that is an Iroquois styled wood crate. But yeah, anyway, the, the, the crate start doesn't matter that much on Deccan just because you can pretty much always buy wood in your market and mm -hmm. make up for it. Uh, but yeah, Prince not gathering his coin, not building a market, shopping some wood though. Hmm. Uh, I, feel I like mean, it looks like he's going to be building a longhouse maybe and then dropping a farm with that, um, with that Travla that might be part of the thought process here. But uh, he could drop a market still. He is gathering that coin now, so still a couple of options for him. We'll have to wait and see what he chooses to do. On the other side of the map, though, it's going to be a 10-10 for Turk. He's uh, decided to build a market and a trading post and go for a 10-10. I'm not sure if the market is a little bit overkill because it seems like it might be difficult to get that house down now uh, when he does start aging, but uh, going to be a very quick age up either way. And yeah, and I would like to say that Prince got six yaks to uh, to two only. Although he has to be careful, he is splitting with the cliff. But um, you would expect India to get more mm -hmm. than hero. And in this special, well, I mean, it's just huge, right? Like, imagine it would be six yaks for India and two for hero. It would make a big difference because India would get more, much more XP in, and hero would have. How much is that? 2k less food later on, kind of. Because these yaks are going to be fat literally at 7 minutes or, or something like that. Like, it's insanely early. It's a, it's a huge boost. Even if you're naked FF and you're up at 7 minutes and you start pushing, you already get fat yaks. So it just fuels your mass so much. It's, it's really great. Yeah, it's really, really nice for Eero, for sure. Um, looks like he's going to be aging up with the wise woman. Uh, gonna give him the extra crates and stuff like that. So not gonna be a fast stage or anything crazy like that. Still has the option to use the fast yeah. stage later on, maybe to fortress or something like that. He's gonna naked FF. You can see it already. Like he's just not chopping any wood. He's mm -hmm. just sending bills on coin. He's gonna get three hundred coin probably, then stop because he gets one hundred from the age up, and gonna ship six hundred first and age. Or he might go for the uh, eight hundred crates. This could also work, I guess. It's a bit he slower, but you get some wood. And I think he's going for it because he's sending more bills on coin. Uh, yeah, he's totally going for that. Yeah, could 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 be for sure. And this is the reason he didn't uh, decide to build that market and trade the uh, uh, gold because he wanted to get up to Fortress as soon as possible. Uh, also going to be yeah. spotting out that forward aggro, so he knows that there is the potential for some aggression. But I don't know yeah, if he'll be too concerned easy. about that. He could easily just naked. wall off the front part of this base here potentially as well. If you're naked FF, uh, without shipping five bills, there's no way India can pressure you, I think. I mean, you're just so fast. Although it's a 10-10, so it's still kind of scary, but we'll have to see. Uh, I, wa I wonder if Prince is... Prince has no extra... Oh, pops wait. Points, does so. does he bait the animals? He does bait uh, the animals. Right. Or the guardians. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, I mean... Although it is gonna, it's gonna get a lot of extra damage on this Agrifort, and it is actually gonna buy some time when the Sepoy pop out from the Agrifort because they'll have to sort of deal with those rhinos before anything else happens. Yeah. But uh, he is basically saying like, "Hey, here's there's three twenty XP. You should pick this up," <laughs> and uh, yeah, that'll be a nice like that'll be a nice pickup for Turk. But I, I do think the decision is good overall. Yeah, it's gonna I, buy him a I, lot I, of time here. I kind of like to do that when I'm pushing because then it adds up to your unit. Yeah. It's kind of like timing, like, you know. But then again, if you do that, uh, I'm took might just pick it up before. Just yeah, and just, 
Right. But just so look look I how much time look how much time it's buying. Yeah. It's forced these units back all the way like to their base. The war chief also just in, being in here being annoying. Um, he might lose he it, but not standing. He should just stun the uh, two of them and, and just stop killing them with his monks. I think. But he's getting the uh, well. That's big though. Killing the uh, war chief in such a, an awful spot for for prince. But <laughs> more than but, one cage, he siege down the aggro. Floor. Yeah, but like the these sepoy could have been in the base like almost a full yeah, minute right. ago, right? They're they're still here though, and uh, still forced to kill these rhinos. So Prince now clicking up to the yeah. fortress age. He's going to be fortress potentially before these units get into his base, uh, depending on whether or not Turk goes immediately or not. Looks like he will be in the base shortly before Prince actually gets up. But it did buy him a lot of time. But, but at the same time, look at the build order. Uh, I'm Turk wasn't going for five sepoys first. She did second card. So I think mm -hmm. he anyway kind of intended to not rush, but more go for some kind of uh, small timing. Uh, but it's not a very scary timing, to be to be honest. Though it's going to hit right when Prince is up, and he might yeah. lose his Travois, he's, which would suck for him very much. definitely got to be careful with where he uh, places that Travois. Um, or pops it from. Looks like it'll be safe though. Not gonna be able to reach the other side of the town center. Probably just gonna replace that war hut. Yeah, there it goes. So Aww. losing that war hut in the front, not gonna be the biggest deal in the world. Well, um, and four is maybe, coming behind this. Uh, can I go... Oh, the passing of the sepoy around the TC. I, I don't know. It might just go down though. Yeah, it looks like and it is actually just gonna go down. Again, losing the explorer is so huge here. It just helps so much defending. Yeah, just getting and... the traction. Yeah, and the crack shot once you're in fortress just does way more damage than it does in uh, colonial. So that's definitely a big blow to him, yeah. and he's just going to circle siege the TC now. Uh, he knows that there's not going to be anywhere for the units to pop out uh, aside from the town center. Also, splitting a sower off onto the sides to try and find any hidden villagers. I really like that. Uh, is he going to find them? Uh, no, maybe not. No, but, I don't think he's going to go too, too far. He wants to stick around near the town center, uh, yeah. just in case there's like an 8 force prowler shipment or something like that. But yeah, this looks like the town center might go down. Uh, there is a shipment on the way for Prince. Uh, probably, okay, 9 Tomahawks. I don't think this is going to be enough, though. Yeah, that's pretty much GG, I think. He really needed 5 musket riders here and just uh, keep buying time with them and just yeah. having stuff, you know. Maybe, maybe calling the... Tomahawk big button if and, he can at some point. But. And he doesn't have any other he doesn't have any other units behind this. Uh, like he's got twenty five population, so he doesn't have another shipment in queue. It's just the five Tomahawks and the twenty Vilpop that he has. And that town center is definitely going to go down. Uh, trying to eat one of the yaks, wanting to get the resources for that big button. Uh, the first yeah. the first five Tomahawk big button that might be able to save this uh, town center for him. But I don't think it's going to be enough, especially with these Tomahawks being forced to fight just to prevent the units from sieging. He's, yeah, it's uh, looking rough. And Turk looking poised to take a 2-1 lead, sorry, in this series. Uh, I think it's all down to Prince shipping five bills, which was maybe a little bit greedy because yeah. Turk was going 10-10. I think he could have done the same thing without five bills and just get an extra unit shipment and be okay. Uh, maybe also drop a small wall in front of his base. But yeah, that was... Uh, well, I, I didn't expect Hero to lose that like so fast. Like I would expect Hero to hold that timing. But then again, yeah, no Explorer. The, the Travois dying, the 5 villager shipment. Yep. Yeah. Quick game. All of it adds up to a disaster. Yep. But I did like the uh, treasure. Actually. Yeah, that was that was a that was a good idea from Prince, but sadly didn't uh, didn't buy quite enough time to save yeah. his base. Maybe he thought he it was buying more time than it actually was, because uh, as we know, Turk did actually go for that sort of slower timing anyway, and wasn't really planning on going all yeah. in. Um, and uh, yeah, so he Prince thought he had. Maybe the possibility to get away with that five vil shipment, but sadly, uh, did not. And when you look at uh, Turk's shipment progression, it's actually almost every single shipment back to back since the first one in uh, Colonial, um, due to this XP treasure as well. Like the four Sowar shipment came in right after the five sepoy because of that. 
and it, it helped a lot because without Forza Wars, maybe maybe Prince could have got away with Eight Forest Brothers or, or whatever. But anyway, uh, yeah, was uh, interesting. GG out, I guess. And uh, that's in fact match point already. And Prince needs to uh, win two games in a row now if he wants to win this uh, series. Yeah, for sure. Um, why do I feel like we didn't record that last game? Uh, I also feel like it wasn't recorded. Hmm. But oh well. Well, it's it's streamed anyway, right? Yeah. And there's not much to record in eight minute game where it's just. See true. Police, see the true. There's not. There's not a lot to uh, really see here. Yeah. Um. So the next map is going to be uh, New England, and uh, Turk has to pick first. I like. I like watching games on this map for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I sometimes don't like playing on it. Just because the warship's action is annoying me sometimes, but it's definitely very entertaining to watch. Yeah, it really is. Um, and oh, Portugal yeah, going to be coming out for Turk. Definitely <clears throat> a, a solid pick. Yeah, for sure. The um, TC just brings so much map control on this. I mean, map and pawn control on this on this map. Yeah. Extra TC. And Sometimes, though, it's kind of like a hard choice. Do you choose to defend your pond, or do you choose to defend uh, your coastline with it? Sort of depends on if you're going to go for a water type of build, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Port has a lot of options on this map, too. They could go for ATP, they could go for water, they could go um, try and lock down the middle of the map with that town center. So There's even the option to drop a TC on that island. Probably not the second TC, but the third one, for example. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose uh, that's I suppose that's possible. I mean, there is a gold mine there and a handful of trees, um, and yeah, it would help. Wanna, it would help control the water quite a yeah, bit. If you really go heavy on water, if you don't, then it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. But if you play full water style, you know, like Kinesis style, I would consider dropping a TC there. Yeah, it seems like it could be all right. Depends a little bit on the situation, maybe, but yeah, I could see it. But I, I, I don't think I am Turk is much of a. Well, I've, I've actually never seen him play water except in this Russian Euro. I okay, think. looks like he is actually going to switch over to Japan. Um, yeah, Japan is all right for sure on this map. Um, one other thing about this map as well is that it's pretty low gold compared to other maps, and uh, Japan has a lot of ways to sort of mitigate that. Obviously they have Yumi archers which cost wood and they also have uh, shrines that can generate gold for them and sort of prolong the use of those coin mines. Um, they also tend to be a sieve that's pretty good against water boom just because they can boom so hard themselves on the land. Well, I just hope um, we see Otto from Prince just because it's a 40p map. Because Abyss guns are insane with the pawns and with the chokes. Yeah, like Auto, Auto so is much, quite good on New England for sure. So much containing potential here. I mean, you could even wall up his side from the pawn to the left side of the map. You know, uh, you you could even wall up there, just clean up the shrines on your side and containing the chokes and with warships and stuff. I mean, and the forty p stage coach. Yeah, it's just uh, I I would I would directly pick Otto without even hesitating one second on this map to be honest but we'll see what prince does yeah i don't know if prince is much of an auto player uh himself um what does not he have much, available to him say again not 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 the huge auto player but he he can play pretty much every sieve mm -hmm. he has lots of experience and let's face it auto is not very hard to play so uh well we'll see Maybe he feels more comfortable picking something else, but I personally can't think of something better than Otto here. Or maybe something like Russia. He can't go Aztecs anymore, which is a good counter pick to Japan. Russia would be very good as well, I guess. Yep, definitely uh, good against Japan for sure. And uh, with the blockhouse as well, you can sort of use that to lock down the pond and stuff. Yeah. And the stagecoach again. Yep, stagecoach is uh, pretty good in this match as well, but yeah, it's going to be Otto. Oh yeah, 
well, that's pretty good. I'm excited to see some Abus uh, warship unit composition. Yep, good old Abus <laughs> warship, fun comp. Yep, <laughs> right. Yeah. All right, looks like we're gonna be greening in. In this game, uh, four of the best of five between Prince and I'm Turk. Of the round of uh, 32, is it? It I is guess? indeed the round of 32. And it's going to be your turn to introduce the players. Nice. No. Why? <laughs> All right, I'll do it as soon as I update the score. Oh, well. You're better than 99% of ESOC casters now. Yeah, I, could, I, I, I couldn't myself. <laughs> I, I couldn't update it in the second game, which was frustrating because my UI was super bugged. But uh, oh. whatever. Um, just look at the map real quick. They both have four mines. Hunts look pretty much symmetrical. Looks like a good spawn. Um, even the sheep sort of spawning relatively even. All right. Uh, so yeah. without nice further thing. ado, in the top yeah. side of the map. Potentially on the verge of losing the series, we have Prince of Kabul playing as the uh, the blue uh, Ottomans, and uh, yeah, looking to claw his way back into the series, bring it up to two two, and his opponent on the other side playing as the uh, Red Japan, going for two shrines instead of a consulate start, um, trying to be a little bit faster maybe. Although I don't know if that's actually faster than going for the consulate. Uh, it's going to be I am Turk. Grabbing 90 yeah. food as well. Going to help his age up. TP going to be going down for Prince. Not surprising at all. Playing as uh, Ottomans. Yeah. Um, and it's a map with usually a couple nice treasures. Like there's this... I'm not sure what's happening here. Um... <laughs> Because they're in front, I guess. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Yeah, they're they symmetrical, I mean... Yeah, uh, Prince's Berry is also very exposed, so... That's kind of an unlucky spawn for Japan, for sure, but it's not going to be the yeah. end of the world, most likely. Uh, I mean... To be honest... You know, we, we can't rehost that. It's like it's like when you get your mine a little bit in front and you're playing yeah, Germany. Yeah, yeah. But... Uh, but he should he, be he going should, on that. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, he should be gathering from them right now, probably, just to uh, burn down those berries as much as possible in the early game before they can really be pressured. To be fair, he does get both the gold mine and the berries in front. It's not worth a rehost, but we can say it's unlucky. Yeah, it is, uh, it is pretty unlucky, that's for sure. I mean, like, if it was uh, another sieve, maybe, like, it'd be... Kind of okay because you know you you get your hunts like in a really nice well, position behind the town center and stuff, but yeah, 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 for sure. Like there's potentially pressure coming from Otto in this matchup. So, but well, um, he can also wall up this choke. Yes, it's not the end of the world. Uh, this CDB treasure, there's gonna be a contention here. Yeah, it seems a little bit risky for Otto to go for this at this stage, maybe. But um, yeah, generally speaking, I think uh, a good tip is to start the treasure from this side. Always start the treasure mm -hmm. from the side where your opponent is most likely to come from. Then you can see him coming because, yeah, you know, like he's taking it from the side of his base where most likely there's not going to be any explorer coming. So he doesn't see M2 on the other side. And now he's lost most of his HP. Uh, he might even lose his explorer, even if the Japanese monks can't snare. Uh, later on, he might be denied the trading post. It could be really annoying. And Turk does get the CDB. Yeah, he does. And uh, behind this too, the wonder going down really early for Japan as a result of uh, maybe going for those double shrines and getting that early 90 food is going to be really nice for him. He's still going to age up a little bit later because he only has one vill on the wonder. A little bit later than Otto, that is. But uh, it's going to be good for him in the long run, for sure. Yeah, and because Otto is very fast anyway. Um... By the way, Prince didn't make a mask in age one. He's keeping the wood most likely for trading posts, or maybe just uh, maybe just gonna be really aggressive with that wood. 
Yeah, it looks like he does want to build a trading post, though, placing that foundation down there on the top side there. A uh, couple of forward villagers coming out as well. Uh, is the TP going to go up? He's bringing the CDB. He's going to deny the trading post. There's no way this goes up now. And Prince is smart. He's putting back directly. He's going to wait for his age up, and when he has enough HP, he's going to come back to build it. Yeah, he got to... <laughs> Does it get divide striked? He's got probably one or two more shots. In. Uh, oh, he's going to die! He's gonna die! Oh no! Oh, that's uh, that's brutal for sure. He's gonna oh, have to send uh, a villager out there, maybe. Yeah, he's already sending the villager out there to go rescue that explorer. Yeah. But that's gonna buy a lot of um, a lot of uh, time for uh, Japan mm -hmm. because it's gonna slow down Ottoman's boom. He's gonna miss some passes on this trading post. Uh, gonna waste a lot of villager seconds walking up there. So, I would have said the ship actually. The ship can rescue your explorer, in fact. It's a bit risky because it might get stolen, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not villager seconds. I don't know. Um, well, anyway, that's just... Yeah. This CDB treasure costs so much to print. He lost, he lost the CDB. He lost his explorer. He delayed his TP and now some walking time from his, from his villager. I mean, it's just huge, honestly. It's just really... Uh, a really bad stop for Prince now. Yeah, it looks like uh, Turk is actually... Okay, no, he's going for 600 wood, but he's got the Japanese consulate and he's training clubs right now. Um, and, uh... Yeah, there's only one military building out for Prince at the moment. Uh, probably going to add a second one with the 700 wood now in. It's going to be, yeah, an artillery foundry. It's going to be Jan Abus. But uh, these clubs walking off to the left side of the map here... Uh, doing a really good job of just keeping this explorer under control. Going to make sure he can't construct any more trading posts. Really slow down Ottoman's boom there. Like, he really, really wants to have stagecoach, but these clubs are definitely just going to uh, potentially straight up deny this or kill trading posts, maybe draw some of the military uh, over to this location and away from his main base. So this is a really nice play from Turk overall so far. Yeah, indeed. And isn't this just a point where Otto makes like five or ten abus and ships the warships here um i mean to just secure the tp line and um just yeah defend. it could be and once you have those warships right you can just sort of sit like on top of your opponent's base and just constantly fight especially with abus guns you can just kite back towards those warships anytime your opponent walks up could be uh yeah. pretty scary for uh, Japan and he knows that the units are on the right side you're defending the club so he's walking up a little bit going to be sniping off the explorer denying oh, yeah. that trading post again uh, he could and, finish and that off with a vill but it's gonna buy him even more time again if they catch the abus guns oh yeah yeah there's six abus in queue uh, could potentially go down really quickly although I mean that the abus guns can this just snipe great. one of the yumi as well right this is just a great spot to pop your Apus guns with a cliff. Yeah, there's like no way for you to get into them, uh, really. Yeah, look at that. I mean, he can just kite there and there's no way to can follow him. Look at his Yumi's, they're just not following. And Prince should just keep taking free shots, to be honest, because um, when you have one line of Apus guns, they're all shooting at the same time. But when the Yumi's are in this kind of formation, only one or two of them are going to shoot, you know, like a couple of them. So what, what Prince is doing now is great. He's just taking free kills, picking off the corners of the Yumi's. Uh, and he could have even popped his chance right on top of the Yumi's in melee mode, but he popped them on the other side of the racks. He would have cleaned up, I think. Yeah, uh, Japan also changing his shipment point to the pond here. Uh, so getting... going to be applying a little bit of pressure to the forward base that way. But there's something about Apis guns that makes this maybe not oh. so great once they arrive, right? Apis uh, yeah, guns, and... uh, go on. Even just now, did you see the volleys? Yeah, yeah, I like, did. Even it's lost. Uh, Prince has lost two giants and he's killed eight Yumi's and three clubs. <laughs> so it's just such a great trade. Yeah, it's kind of insane. And, now... and the Funes are in <laughs> now, but I don't know if the Funes are able to do much. Like, already the Abus count is high enough that he can almost snipe that off. Gonna take a couple of and... shots at that uh, barracks for now, but... They even have 18 range only, unlike Caravos who have 20, so they have the same range as, as Abus guns. Yeah. Uh, Prince, though, being maybe a little bit hesitant to try and fight that, looks like that barracks might just go down. Uh, Fune's gonna walk up and try and take a shot at the Abus guns. 
Okay. Maybe he's just waiting for his own cargo shipment. Uh, I mean, galleys, you know? Yeah, but he doesn't have a shipment point in the pond yet, so... No, I mean, when he gets a shipment now... Yeah, like yeah. Ten, maybe, then he's gonna try to do that. Maybe he doesn't want to take a fight before he gets his own warships, just playing it safe, you know? Um, like, if he can make five more Abers and ship his galleys, he's totally gonna get the control of the pond. Then all he needs to do is rebuild the racks now and get the stagecoach. Yeah. And he did ship 600 wood, so he can do that. Oh, adding a stable now, actually. I like this instead of rebuilding the barracks. Yeah. Also, is an option. Uh, it's kind of risky, obviously, because you're not going to be able to make one tie cap for quite a while. But since um, obviously Turk is mostly going for Yumi's, although he is adding a stable. But then again, um, Hussars are better than Nagis. Yeah, at, at fighting. and here's here's the galleys now. Uh, they... Yeah, he needs to bring his Abuskan, though. Yeah, it looks like that f last Fune is going to go down, and then these Yumi's are going to be really out of position here. They're going to have to retreat around the pond, which is going to give the galley a lot of free shots in here. Uh, he could, he, could, uh, he even, could potentially just cut him off if he moves his army across the water with that ship. Yeah. Oh yeah, this would be great. He needs to do that. If he could just bring them in the galley yeah. and, uh, and there is on, right now on the other side would have been huge. Yeah, unfortunately, he, uh, unfortunately not going for that this time around, but definitely would have been good. Great. He's just getting the stagecoach back, I guess. Just but well, it could have been really great, but still. Uh, Still, you know, you see, like, we, we can see why Abus guns and boats is a good combo, just... He could have maybe even saved the second galley. I don't think he needed to lose one of them. But still, he's ending up having one more, just one one warship in the pond. And Amtur has no way to ship any warship there, right? Yeah, for so, sure. So it's just going to be tough for Turk to regain control of this part of the map. He's quite ahead in Eco, obviously, because he's Japan against Otto. But now Otto is going to get a 4TB stagecoach and not exactly going to even up the Eco, but almost. And then there's Abus guns. But it's not it's not over or something. I mean, Japan has a solid Eco. He has a decent, a very decent mass of Yumi's. So I'm curious to see how this game is going to go. He has to ship the two Orchards now, though, which is... Uh, Never something you're happy to do. Yeah, he still like hasn't really used the berries though on the front of his base. I mean, he's used one of the yeah. bushes, but uh, maybe could have delayed that a little bit longer if he'd been using those berries earlier in the game when they weren't under threat. Um, but yeah, unfortunately for him, he does have to ship the orchards now. I don't know why he's taking not taking the berries. Indeed, um, could have delayed by at least one shipment his cherry orchards. But, um, yeah, well, interesting game anyway. Um, Prince showing his hustles, I'm not a fan of it. He showed them here, and uh, I feel like when you do a calf switch, it's always better to just not reveal it. Because yeah. he's trained like two kind of two batches of husk and uh, ship three, so now he's got. But husk. is it is it going to matter though? There's not a lot of anti cav here, and there's not a lot of room for them to retreat. Although this is kind of a little bit of a choke point. Yeah, that the choke and it's Yumi's. But oh, <laughs> he's moving them right into the house. Now he's definitely going to get cleaned up. That's for sure. Yeah, and the the daimyo kind of forced to fight a little bit too as well. Uh, might just go down, getting focus fired by both the hussars and the. Uh, infantry and does actually go down uh there's sentries being called to defend this as well but just walking straight into the infantry instead of walking around the cliff to defend the yumis where they kind of wanted to be uh so this is looking a little bit rough for turk i mean the hussars are kind of low hp they could go down pretty quickly but um he's, he's still gonna a get a good at, trade here yeah they're doing a good job at hit and running and stuff but the hussar tanking and the abus in the back are just killing everything that's a problem uh, it's not like against some other sea where they have like crossbows, for example, in the back. Now it's Abus guns and they just DPS so much. Although he did clean up the Hussars and he, it's not the worst trade for Turk. But losing the Daimyo is of course big since he can't replace it. And uh, and meanwhile, Otto got the stagecoach and he will very soon uh, nuke this TP down and take it for himself. 
and uh, still the galley controlling in the pond there. I, I don't know. And soon, I guess, Japan is going to have, not directly now, but at some point, going to have to move on to the next coin mines, and they're a bit exposed, especially when you can ferry your units through the pond with a galley. Like, this is not super safe. Yeah, it's definitely not the easiest uh, to defend, for sure. Um, but, I mean, that being said, we might have reached the point where Otto just can't keep up with the economy from Japan. Um, yeah. He's quite far ahead economically, even with all the TPs. Uh, it'll be closed a little bit when this fourth TP goes up, but um, Japanese units are pretty good as well. Uh, they don't have any upgrades on them yet, but um, at this stage in the well. game... Yeah, it's true, losing the Daimyo hurts, but at this stage in the game, it might be difficult for Otto to keep up in, in terms of uh, military in a couple minutes here. Yeah, um, I don't know what you do here as Otto. Do you try to age? I guess it would give maybe too much time to Japan. I, I feel like you have to contain, just siege down all the shrines, keep trading with your Abus. Well, it feels like... In. Yeah, it feels like he could just maybe be keeping oh. his army like on the front side here, just with the galley to retreat to. Uh, maybe yeah. not so. Maybe not with how low it is now. But what are you doing? Okay, trying to get a volley. Actually, managing to dodge most of those uh, cannonballs, moving back at just the right moment. Um, yeah, you... I think I think what Turkey is doing is kind of smart, actually. I mean, Prince has to be really careful because the galley is a very nice advantage now, and if he can lose it because it's kind of a low HP warship and Yumi's have so much attack, could lose it quite quickly. So he needs to be careful. Look at that now. Yeah, it looks You're like really it might just back. go down. It's at, down yeah. at 97 HP. Like, he needs to build a dock to repair this. This yeah. is like a huge advantage for him in uh, this game right now, and he can't really afford to lose it. Yeah, he needs to keep this galley alive. I, I agree he should make a dock, maybe even at some point train a second galley. Mm -hmm. But... Um, yeah, it's not looking great for Otto. It's maybe the end of this series, actually. It uh, it could be approaching the end of the series, for sure. Um, with the big mass of Nagi starting to grow, uh, Ottomans are not the greatest at dealing with big cav masses in, uh, well, at any stage in the game, really. And uh, this could be rough for him. He also uh, doesn't have any upgrades on those Abus guns or anything just yet. Um yeah, he has advanced arsenal in his like, deck, which would help his Jans as well. But it's uh, not going to be something he's really going to be able to afford at any point in this game. It just feels like uh, the start was really bad for Prince, and then he was kind of passive. But here we have a fight, and uh, well, there's still Abus guns, and they do have one card. Now. The galley, no. Going down, no. Oh. But yeah, I mean. There wasn't really anything that Galley was going to be able to do anyway without constructing a dock to repair that, and maybe he just feels like he can't afford to do that at this point in the game, so... Yeah, but, I mean, Apiskan is still really, really strong here. He can still uh, fight these Yumis pretty effectively. Uh, now with the Apis attack card coming in, giving him an extra 6 damage, it's going to be hard for uh, Turk to continue... Uh, trading here, but again, the Nagi mass is uh, getting quite large and scary, so... And Yumi's are still one of the best range infantry, even if they're nowhere mm -hmm. nearly as strong as Abus gun, they're still able to to do some damage, and I would have actually liked the uh, Abus HP and not attack here, because it would probably mean a couple more shots from these Yumi's before Abus, Abus gun would die. Uh, everything jamming in, I think there's just not enough Jans here. It's just too, too many Nagis, and it's going to be the end of this game, to be honest. Yeah, it's looking rough for Ottoman, for sure. Getting a really nice position here, uh, Turk is. With another reinforcing batch of Nagis in the back that's yet to join the fight. And yeah, with the Jan mass now down to only a couple of Jans left, and the Abus guns on their own, it looks like it is probably going to be the end of the series. And uh, Turk is probably going to take a comfortable victory, 3-1 uh, to one in the series. Yeah. Um, so yeah, well, I wanted to say that then I, I kind of stopped talking about it because this, the fight was starting, but did Prince ever pressure a Turk in this game? I feel like he never really pushed his base or anything. Um, yeah, I feel like he didn't really have the opportunity. Like, he got distracted by the clubs that were sieging the trading post up at the top side of the map here, sent his first couple batches of Jans to go deal with that, um, and then, you know, 
at that point, you don't have stagecoach, you don't have the trading post, your explorer's dead because Turk came up and killed it again. Um, but and there was one point where he took some great volleys and, and he killed a lot of humans. Maybe he could have tried to poke a bit. I don't know. Uh, just feels like you mm -hmm. can't. No yeah, you can't. Stage, you can't just let Japan. Yeah, stuff. yeah, you certainly can't just let Japan get away with whatever he wants, which is sort of what yeah. happened in this game. And um, although yeah. one thing I wanted to say, look at this CDB next to the shrine on the left. It gathered seven hundred coins in this game, more <laughs> than one Japanese shipment. Yeah, that's it's just so good. That is that is a uh, pretty nice. That's like an extra. Um, Three or four Nagi, for sure. Well, he, he just shipped 600 coin now at 1640, so it's like he got a second 600 coin for free there. Um, kind of. It's, except it's even better because you get it earlier, uh, some of it at least. But anyway, yeah, well, uh, three to one. Kind of a small upset. I mean, Turk is a good player, but Prince has just more experience and he used to be a really strong player, but then he's probably rusty at the moment, I guess. And uh, that's, well, that's a good victory for, for Turk there. Moving on to the round of 16 to play Kinesi, I think.